Hello, Internet. I am Spaceman Orange, and I have been having a lot of fun building space colonies in LEGO Worlds recently. And so I figured I'd make some videos to share what I've been building with you. Um, I want to apologize to begin with for the mouse cursor. I can't seem to make it go away in the videos, so if any of you know how to do that, that would be awesome. I've tried messing with the settings in my recording program, and it's still there, so I don't know how to get rid of it. But anyways, LEGO Worlds is a fantastic game that I really wish I would see people playing more because it has this really fun modular building system where I can build something like a launch pad brick by brick and then save the model of it and just paste it in all my new space colonies so I don't have to build the same thing over and over again. And with that, I guess I'll show you, I'm going to show you my first uh, space colony that I've built here. And then I'm going to go off and show you guys the process of how I've used this great building system to make a new one. Uh, I've tried to keep the construction of things pretty realistic, as I am a nerd and care about how realistic my totally non-functional space colony is. What is that doing up there? So right here is the entrance to the space colony. All entrances to this are uh, an airlock. Built this room where I've got two doors, nice spongy looking floor and some, well it was supposed to be two, but uh, normally two air conditioning units, as that's the closest thing I could find to represent a depressurization unit. So in here, the first section of the colony is the uh, habitation area. Each of these rooms has two beds, sometimes one large bed for couples, and usually some decorations around. Um, in future colonies, I'm probably going to build these differently because having just two people in each of these rooms is really inefficient. I can fit at least four beds in here, and in a real space colony, um, space is, no pun intended, but space is going to be really valuable, and so having like a room like this with one big bed for a couple to sleep in and then like their own table and chairs that just would not happen but I didn't think about that when I was making this one because I'm still learning to do this right here we've got a washing area and the bathroom so hello citizen let's see no I want to open the door not fly down the toilet oh I went down the toilet well that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> oh well. Don't seem to be able to open doors very well sometimes. See, in here is the, uh... Actually, a big multi-purpose room. This is the kitchen and lounge and mess hall. The main room, and in a real place, what I should have done is put basically all of the tables and chairs in here, because that's the most efficient way of doing things, and it's still pretty nice. Do need help? Don't look at me all grumpy like that. You're the one who can't open the door. Over here we have greenhouses set up for food supply, and I'm not sure I made these large enough to supply as many people as are here, but maybe they're still importing food from off-world. I don't know. Future uh, greenhouses I might make bigger. All right, what else do we have over here? Over here, we have our garage, which has a vehicle missing again. Every time I come here, one of the NPCs has taken one of the vehicles out. And you are not wearing your helmet. Unfortunately, in LEGO Worlds, there isn't actually any, uh, like, lunar or Martian landscape map types, so or biomes, rather. So I'm kind of having to make do with the desolate places that it has, and I prefer the frozen ones because it's the most spacey in being frozen. And uh, I figure that there actually would be some cause to have airlocks here because it's so cold outside, but not a depressurization room. Close enough. All right. Come on. There we go. Out here we have the water purification plant. 
but you should be able to hear the water in there actually use the Lego World's uh, water brick type. And I'm not entirely sure how to build these because I haven't seen very many of these in fiction or in real life, but I looked up a picture and it had, uh, I saw circles and octagons that have these spinning things in them, which I can't make spin in the game because I can't make moving parts, unfortunately. But this is the closest approximation I could come to a real water purification plant. Um, out here is our solar array, which I figure this should be about big enough for this colony. It might need to be bigger feature ones, I'm not sure. It also has the helipad, which I'll fly around in later because I found out flying these things first person looks really cool. And out here we have the uh, launch pads with their fuel tanks and our loading area, which is mostly empty right now because there's nothing landed here. And there would have been a pod right here, except that my first attempt at building one was terrible, so I destroyed it and replaced the launch pad. Alright, let's do a quick fly around and then we'll go show you the process of how I've been making new colonies. this is what our uh, place looks like from above. I am quite happy with it. Um, if you guys think that there's anything here that's super unrealistic or something I could do better then please um, leave a comment and let me know because I am all about improving my building skills and the realism of this thing. I don't want to get too nitpicky with the details because that is a rabbit hole that you could go really far down. But I would like to make the place as realistic as I can reasonably do, because I'm a nerd and care about these things very much. Alright, so let's go to Rocket. And I'm going to show you how I make a colony that... Oh, plastic troublemakers. Alright, you can actually see the colony right there on the world. Um, by the way, for any of you who are interested in playing the game, these three little things here, you can't actually make worlds of this size. These are the tutorial ones, and I tried deleting them. They used to be over here. And uh, I tried deleting these things, and they reappeared. So apparently you cannot get rid of the tutorial worlds. In fact, I'll try deleting this one. And, yep, see? It, it didn't even pretend to go away. That's stupid. I don't want those things there, they're just cluttering up my galaxy. So to make a new world, pretty much just loop through them until I find something with biomes I like. The snowy ones are best, but I'll also go with desert or uh, the volcanic one. The volcanic one's a little obnoxious. I might actually go to one of those and show you why. No, no. It'd be really nice once I get to 100 gold bricks and can just design my own. What is that? No, that's not big enough. No. Uh. Hmm. I could do. I'll try a couple. Excuse me. I'll try a couple more and see if I like. See, I would do this one, but that's got these huge slopes on it, and that is not good for building things on. That looks promising. I'm not sure what this giant flat area is too. That's like more flat than I've ever seen something before. The river too. The only time I've seen those kinds of rivers are with the enchanted forest things, but there's no trees there? Let's go check it out. And I will skip through the loading sequence in the final video because that takes way too long. Looks like we have landed in a jungle, which is not where I want to be at all. You want water. Okay. I don't really like farming for gold bricks in this. Like, I know I need to to get... Yes, you have found water. I know I need to to get more advancements, but no, you have a gold brick. You're going to give me the gold brick. Thank you. 
Oh, and I can discover this one. Sweet. Anyways, farming for gold bricks and hunting for all these other kinds of things, new gear types, is kind of fun, but really I think the strength that this game has is with the building. And that is what I've been loving so much in this. Which means I should stop stalling, blabbering, whatever, and get around to buildings. So let's, uh, whoa, there we go. Let me get my trusty arctic helicopter out. Whoa, never seen it do that before. Alright, now let's see where we are going. Okay, I'm gonna head this way away from the ocean first and see what in the world it is. It just didn't show the trees. Okay. So yeah, this is the, uh, whoa, that's a shark boundary. This is the medieval forest kind of place. Really nice flat land for building, and I might switch from space building to medieval building someday and build over there instead. But that's not what we came here for. We came here for lava. Once it, you know, loads. Alright, so, once I get to a world, and I've found a world that I, uh, has the right biomes I want to build in, um, no towns, no dungeons, okay. One of the first things you gotta do is find a good flat area to build in, because the, uh, modular construction set I've made only really works on flat areas, because it has to line up perfectly, whoa, that's pretty cool. All right, whoa, oh, that's not so cool. Okay, that's actually very hot. I should move, okay. <laughs> All right, so I wanna find a nice flat area to build and there's a lot of flat area out here. So I think I'm going to go, dang, this is actually a really cool area. I'm gonna go with this area. This is nice and big. All right, goodbye helicopter. Alright, so, once you get to an area, um, this area is already pretty flat, but it is not actually flat enough for me to, uh, to build, and I have to fully flatten it out first. And this is where I'm going to show you the problem with the lava worlds. Um, so... The trouble with the lava worlds is that you end up with these breaks in your building area because, you know, there's lava here and you can't build on top of that. So, I don't really like to do this because, well, you'll see why. Um, so the first... I wish I could turn those off. Or kill them or something. Alright. So if I try to paint over this... You'll see that, you know, it's not glowing anymore, it's it's gone. It shouldn't be a problem. But the paint is only surface level, so if I step here, yeah, he's gonna freak out like it's hot because the lava is right underneath it, so you can't actually get rid of the lava unless you dig it out of the terrain. Um let me undo the paint. So if I see if I remove these sections of terrain so that there is no more lava at all. And then I go and flatten it out. Now I can walk here? That's a little bit more of a process than I would like for this. I'm going to leave this here now because it just opened up a new area for colonization. But that is why I don't normally like to build here and why I prefer the, uh, the frozen area. The desert has other problems. The desert is just like crawling with all these random... Oh, that's interesting. I haven't seen one of those here before. I saw those in the forest areas. Anyways, the desert is just like crawling with characters and creatures and ruins and things, and it's really messy. 
because I don't normally like to build there either. But, in a pinch, either of these will do. Alright, so now I've gotten that flattened out. Let's smooth this so it looks a little less awkward. Fortunately, the smooth tool isn't perfect, but it gets the job done. Alright, so now that I've got my nice flat area here, um, I'm going to look into my brick builds and show you the <laughs> very large number of prefabs that I've made for this. And here I have to complain about the game a little bit. There's no way to sort these. Like, it just lists them. It's not even alphabetical, I think. Yeah, that's W and then P, so it's not alphabetical at all. Um, it does seem to put the numbers first don't understand how these things are sorted. It has the game models first, and then it has your own models, and then it has um, legendary frag uh, coordinate fragments. And that's not ideal. So, this video is going to be a little bit long. I might want to split it up. Anyway, so how I will build my uh, place Let's see, normally I'll start off with my lounge room because it is the biggest. Oh boy, and that is why I picked a large area to build in. Alright, let's put this right here, and then I can maybe go over that flat spot I made. I might have to destroy a bunch of the lava. This is why I said I don't like having these breaks, because the colonies are not small, and um, the lava environment doesn't give you very big areas for building in. Alright, so now that I've got this set up, I have to consider all the different kinds of places I need. So let's do housing first, because that's one of the bigger ones. Housing. So you need housing, I need food, I need water, I need launch pads. And I need the solar array. And the solar array I can pretty much put wherever I want that still has free room. As I can with the launch pads, so. Oh, and I have to think about a garage, too. I have so many things to consider here. Alright, let's do housing. Let's see if I can do housing back here. Get rid of that. I'm going to regret painting over this, but I'm just going to do that. Alright. So all of my prefab things are built on these 20 by 20 build pads that I made. Um, this one was a 3 by 3 structure. And so after I uh, put them on there, I make sure that all of the um, pod town hallways line up perfectly. And that way I can just build a whole colony um, modularly in like two minutes. So let's try that out. So I'm going to do housing back here. So I need my T intersection, which is not that one, that one. Let's get it lined up, there we go. And this isn't gonna be a huge colony, so. Let's see, not the airlock all I need with the door. This will be our uh, bathroom. I don't think I'm going to bother with the washing machines right now. Maybe I'll find some space for them later. I really wish I could sort these and make this much faster. Especially since I'm planning on building even more prefab units. Okay, pot town hall with door. I'll make some bedrooms here, just a few. So I'm going to put four beds in each of those. No, where did the cap go? Not that one. The reason there's duplicates in here is that um, my first attempt at this was before I was using the build pads, and they weren't built to line up very well, and so I had to rebuild my whole set before I could continue. Okay, so no! Leave me alone! You're interrupting my video! 
Alright. So now that we have housing, going to need my solar array. Not solar array. What am I talking about? Um, greenhouse. That's what I'm looking for. I also going to need water treatment, so I think what I'm... That was interesting. I think what I'm going to do is put my... Here. So another T intersection. Do I want to do a T intersection? You know what I don't have in this yet is a corner. I can do a T intersection and put a cap on it, but I don't have a corner. I should maybe make one of those. Alright, find my green house section, which there it is. Put a nope, whole bunch of those down, or as many as I can fit, because apparently I can't fit anymore. And go ahead and fit that cap on there. There we go. And I'll fill that up with stuff later. All right. So now I gotta see. Do I have space? For for a garage over here. Because that definitely seems like something they would have in this type of colony. Okay. I think I can fit that. I just need to move it a little bit further away. There we go. This one is hard to match up because um, I just have that little hole to gauge it by, but I think I got that. Ah, <sighs> uh, crud, I forgot the airlock. Okay. Here we go. Airlock hall, which is different from just the one at the door. Alright, so put this one here. Then I put my garage in so that we don't have all of our nice, cool air just flying out into this volcanic wasteland. Because that would not be good. Okay. That's better. Now that we have that, we need... No, I'm just going to get rid of this lava. No lava. Not here anyways. Oh my. That's a lot of lava. I'm not sure if the darker red cooling lava will have the same problem. Hope not. Because I don't really want to go and nitpick through all of that. Okay. This is smooth. And paint. Select this. For some reason, it is all just gray. It's not very interesting. Huh? Basalt, not just gray. Is that basalt? Oh, oh dear, that's not what I want to do. That's basalt. Okay, if you say so. I need to find that much ago. Okay, so now that we've got that set up, I'm going to put the launch pad over here, which means I need an entrance section. I'll put the water stuff over here, but I think I'm just going to have the one entrance instead of two. This place doesn't really have enough room for more than one launch pad, so we'll just have the one. A little closer to the entrance than I would normally want to have one, but I guess we're working with some advanced, very precise landing procedures, so it's not going to be a concern for them. All right. also don't have enough space for a larger water treatment complex, so we'll just have the one. And find... where did I put... There it is. 
my water tank. And again, I don't really know how these work, so I'm just kind of putting this stuff around in a way that I'm like, yeah, sure, that that looks about right. It it treats water. It stores water. And that's close enough. Okay. So now. Nope. Now, we can have a look. And we've got the basic structure of the colony. And that took me. Looks like it took about five minutes for me to set up. And it looks pretty decent. Now, I just have to populate it with stuff. So, first of all, let's look into. No! I hate those things. Okay. So I'm not sure exactly what they would have here. So... You know what they would probably have is a helipad. That's something I forgot to add. Here we go. At least I would want a helipad because I always do. Because... This vehicle is possibly the most useful one in this game. Oh boy, I have no idea. Here we go, half-tracked off-roader. That seems like something they could definitely use in this environment. That probably is as well. And... Yep, yeah, that... That's probably okay. I don't really know what else they would need here. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to the greenhouse. And I have made four planter models specifically for this thing. It's a little trickier to work in here, though, because the scale is so small. Now, this is something else I'm not very sure about how to do realistically, because I don't really know how much food, or like the rate of food production that farms like this would actually make. So, I'm just kind of guessing as to how much it should do. And I don't really know what this kind of plant would look like in real life either. So, if you guys know of any pictures or any kind of inspiration or data I can use to figure that out, um, that would be really appreciated, because I don't really know what I'm doing in here. Alright, now well, on this one, let's go and take care of the bathrooms. So I actually did look up bathrooms, and in the United States, the number of bathroom stalls you have to have per person depends on the kind of building. So I don't really know, but generally speaking... Uh, it looked like he wanted one stall for every, like, 20 to 50 people, which is a lot less than I thought you would need. Um, and in this place, if we're going to do four in each of these, we've got four, eight, 12. So we don't even have 20. Theoretically, we could do just one, but I'm sure they would appreciate it if we gave them at least two. So I'm going to put two in here. I hope that the toilet model doesn't break when I do this. Oh, that didn't sound good. They good? They're good. Okay. Oh, but the door is not. Okay. Now I have to go in and fix things. So the building tools in LEGO Worlds, while they're really good, um, they're not perfect. And this game still has a long way to go before it is a perfect game. I love it, but it has a long way to go. All right. Bathroom demolitions in space. Let's do this. Because that's totally how it would work. Okay, you know what? I'll just I'll try not putting them together. I like to blend the walls together so that we don't have this unnecessary double thickness wall between them. Um, but as you saw, sometimes it doesn't work. And I don't really get to choose. Okay. Let's find small bunks. Uh, also, so the game has beds I can use already, but um, its beds are all enormous, and I needed something a little bit more modest. What? 
Oh, someone who's using the toilet. Okay. There we go. And let's put them in here. And this video is going a lot longer than I thought it would. And something else. Um, if there's a different video link that would be preferred for this, then like if I should aim for 15 minutes or if I should aim for an hour, um, please let me know. I am very new to YouTube and don't really know what I'm doing. That doesn't look right. Why does it look like that? Did it fail to copy things? No, it's just being weird. Okay. Okay, so that's about all of my pre-made models. I'm going to go into objects. And this thing really needs a sort feature because there are a lot of things to pick from in here. And they're sorted by the environment they come from. Which is kind of nice if you can remember what all the environments are and... But you, no one ever can. Um, so like there will be, you know, a fruit barrel of one kind in one environment and then a different kind in a different environment. And that makes it hard to, uh, to work out. Okay. Oh, this is what I was talking about with the beds. This is, um, that's a little more decent, but this is like the smallest bed I've seen in the game. Most of them are like this, or like this, or even bigger, like that. Also, none of them are very spacey. This is... Ah. Okay. Also, I should put a bathroom sink in the bathroom. That would be, uh, that would be smart of me. Okay. Alright, so let's get ourselves a broadcast dish. Oh, I forgot the solar array. Shoot, okay. I'm gonna put this over here then, and I'm going to real quick make a solar array. These solar panels I think are appropriate size, but not sure if I should have made them bigger. Again, any input you guys have on this would be really appreciated. These are also a little bit tricky to space apart from each other properly. Alright. Once I get to more advanced colonies, I'm going to have to look into building alternative energy sources. Um, not all planets will be able to get as much. Three, four, five. Five, six. Not all planets will be able to uh, get as much solar power as Earth can. I mean, if you're on something like Mercury and you're right next to the sun, then, you know, you've got enough solar power for anything you could possibly want to do with electricity. If you are out on one of the moons of Neptune, not so much. So, and also once you get larger, like, once you have mining operations going, which is something I think I'm going to be getting into next. Um, here we go, that looks good. Once you get into mining operations, then you're going to have to smelt your ores somehow, and how are you going to do that? That's an enormous amount of power, and this solar array is not going to cut it for that. You're going to need, like, huge fields of solar panels to power that. And so you're going to have to find alternative sources. You're going to try geothermal energy? Or are you going to try nuclear power? Nuclear power is probably going to be a better option there. Just have to import the fuel for a while. Um, I don't know about that yet. So I'm going to have to look into alternative energy sources. But for a little prefab pod town colony like this... Um, no objects. Solar panels work just fine. Okay. I like to put one of these on top. Get some stuff out here, make it look used. And some lights at the entrance. That seems useful. Okay. And now I have to scroll through this list and just pick out whatever seems interesting to me because I have no way of sorting it. <sighs> oh, 
I will see if I can skip through scrolling in the, uh, in the final edit. Okay, here we go. So these ones look appropriately spacey, and I can use these for something like a mess hall. That's what I normally do with them anyways. And then I'll have to line these up properly. There we go. It's not bad. Something else about the camera in LEGO Worlds. Um, it will go through blocks, which is really useful when you're building stuff. But it also does that all the time when you're... Uh, I maybe want to put those in the middle. No, I'll keep the space open between the doors. Um, it's not so useful when you're just walking around and you're like going through a cave and you don't want your camera to be going into the walls constantly, but it does it anyways because you have no control over that. Um, so it'd be nice to have it different in different circumstances. For building, this is really good though. And it is primarily a building game. It's just that's not the only thing you're doing. Okay, what else? They would like to have some plants around here because there will be no wildlife or wild plants anywhere else in the world. I don't know if they'd have flowers. That is, in fact, in a real space colony, probably the only greenery they have available to them. It's whatever they bring with them. Alright, so this is something else I'm a little conflicted about. Um, I don't think they would have an oven quite like that, unless this is an electric one. Because, you know, fire is really dangerous in pretty much every circumstance besides normal Earth. Um... And if you somehow manage to burn a hole in the outside of your colony, then you would be in serious trouble and also dead. So that would not be good. All right, science stuff. I forgot to do offices. Well, ah, uh, crud. I'll find somewhere else to do it. Here we go. That makes sense. They would have a research thing to monitor the plants. I think that makes sense. Don't really know about the purpose of this colony. I was just doing it as an example. Okay, so now that we've done all of that, the last thing is to populate it with people, where I think I'll have my last grievance for now, which is that, well, they have a really... Oh, well, there's two, actually. They have a really nice variety of uh, characters to work with. like my astronaut here, but while they do have a nice variety, um, uh, there's a few problems. The main one is that while you can design your own char personal character look, you, uh, you can't make any custom NPCs, which I don't appreciate. Um, There we go. <laughs> so you can't make any custom NPCs, which means you can't make your own, like, space colonists, like I would. I would have mine look something like me, but I can't do that, and so all of my space people look the same. Other issue um, related to this, but would be solved if I could make my own, is that just about all of the uh, scientific characters are female, which... I'd like to have male and female options for, like, all of the things, but I don't. And that's obnoxious. Um, they also only have male spacemen because uh, that does not count. And, as everybody knows, there are definitely both male and female astronauts, so it doesn't really make sense to have all the space people in mind male and all the scientists female. Because why? That's not how the world works. The other thing, uh, this would be harder for them to add to the game, I think, is that the NPCs, I have no control over where they go. They just kind of wander off sometimes, and I never see them again. 
And that's not very good either. I'd like to be able to somehow confine them to my colony. So why can't you open these doors? Come on. I promise you can come out if you want to. Oh, they can close the doors. They just can't open them. All right. So this here is a basic space colony. I made it pretty much... No, I made it entirely out of prefabricated stuff that either I've made or the developers made. It took me a couple... Well, it took me maybe 10 minutes to build the whole thing. And that is why I like this game so much, because... Its building system is perfect for this kind of, like, modular space colony thing, or really any other kind of building you want to do. It really does not feel like building in, say, Minecraft to me. In the future, I would really like to explore other things. I mean, this kind of colony is sort of like an initial outpost, maybe a research thing. But if you're actually trying to colonize a place, you're going to need to move beyond that. You're going to need to get economy going, which means I need to work on mines and plastic farms, which will cover whenever I do that, because that's something weird that we don't really have on Earth. Um, it's necessary for an off-world economy. I'm going to need factories and smelteries. Then I'm going to need uh, natively built housing things, because this stuff, you see it's all in these stands because it was moved here from off-world, or possibly another part of the same world. This is not natively built. And um, the garage is. It's just on the ground. It's probably made of concrete or something. By the way, I don't like the outside look of this garage. It makes sense, but if you have an idea for how to do this better, I'd appreciate that, because it's a garage, and it... It looks like a garage, I think, but it's not very pretty. I guess it doesn't really need to be. Oh, that breaks immersion. Look, trees on the alien planet. Like I said, I can hardly wait until I can design my own worlds. So yeah, um, building native apartment buildings, then need services, maybe make government places, um, much larger farming areas, better water purification plants. There's so much stuff I can do here. Also, building larger uh, launch pads for spaceports and actually building ships to put on here. No, don't bother me right now. All kinds of stuff that I could do. So, if you have any ideas, if you have any uh, suggestions, um, things you think I could do better, things that should be improved, ideas for where to go next, um, or if you have a name idea for this colony, or my other one, because neither of them have names, uh, post a comment. I'd love to read them. I'd love to see what you guys think, because I've never done a YouTube video before, and this is my first one. And I had fun doing it, and I hope you had fun watching it. And uh, I'll see you next time.